Okay. So anytime we have two surfaces, I like to draw out my surfaces. So I'll just make a rough sort of sketch here. We have this. Okay. So for the cone, firstly, this cone can extend out anywhere out, right? It can just then extend out all the way to infinity. In this case, usually if you just take the cone, you might have something like a restriction. For example, Z is from zero to two, so we would taper it off at two, and that would be our region. In this case, however, we do not have that. So it is up to the sphere. Because remember, the sphere, if we draw like this, and now we have this, this area here, that's being enclosed by these two surfaces. Okay, perfect. So how do we figure out the dimensions of the sphere? Well, it's pretty easy. We already have the standard sphere equation here, where two is our rho squared. Rho, by the way, this is going to be our radius, all right? So it's going to be the radius of the sphere. So if our rho squared is going to be equal to two, then we just take the square root of both sides, and we'd find that our rho is square root of two. That is the radius of this entire sphere, okay? So if we now go here, we know here, rho 2, rho 2, all the way here. Okay, and then if we erase all of this, we can see this makes sort of an ice cream cone shaped surface. And this is just part of a sphere. And if we have a sphere, it's a lot easier to work with spherical coordinates. That would be step two, finding your coordinate system. So if we're using spherical coordinates and we want the volume, then we need a triple integral. Now, the triple integral of this in spherical coordinates is defined to be for volume is these three triple integrals we have our rho squared which remember is radius times sine of phi d rho d phi d theta okay so firstly phi is the angle from the z-axis here going all the way to wherever this line touches right and then our theta is from the x-axis here, all the way here to wherever the region is. In this case, we're doing an entire cone, so it would be all the way around. It makes a full 360 degree turn here, okay? It's gonna be useful a lot later on, okay? So firstly, now let us find the, our limits of integration. D rho, right? So our limits, remember, we're always going to be starting from the origin. This entire surface is centered at the origin, if it were a sphere. And if we extend outwards, our radius, well, if we extend out here, 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 our radius is its always going to be square root of 2, right? This is always our radius. So it goes from 0, the origin, to square root of 2. That is the radius of our sphere, right? Now, the angle phi, remember, this here is our angle phi. That's what we define our angle phi to be. It's going to be a little more tricky and requires a little more work, okay? So, firstly, let us ignore this x-axis, right? So, we have our z, y, and x-axis here. Let's just ignore the x-axis right now. And let's just make a 2D graph here, right? We're going to make this. Remember, this is our z, and then this is our y. If we sort of attempt to draw the surface here in a 2D plane, we're going to get something like this, right? And we know this line here is just the radius, rho. And that is equal to square root of 2, okay? But what if we were to draw a line here, okay? And remember, this is our angle phi. Well, no, this line is just um, our opposite line. This looks like a right triangle. And if we can find this, this is the opposite side from this angle. Well, we can just use sine of phi equals our opposite over our hypotenuse. We have our hypotenuse. This is our square root of 2. This is the radius of the sphere. So now all we got to do is find this. Okay, so how are you going to find this? Well, let me draw this cone in three different ways. So firstly, let me draw it here. Let just This is your standard cone. Then w imagine we tilt the cone towards us, so towards the viewer, right? So if we imagine that, we imagine we're going to see more of the actual circle. And if we do it enough times, we are going to get it to the point where we're looking straight down onto this, the the cone so for example if i drew if you're if you're looking here if this was your eye and you were looking straight down what you would see is just a circle right and this is the circle and remember this circle here is just this 
this is the half part of the circle. This would be this part of the circle, right? This is the part that's being that this, this is the opposite side. This is the actual part of the circle. And what do you notice? This is a half of the circle. Well, what do you know? It gives you the half of the circle. Well, the radius, okay? We know the radius is only half of the circle. That is the line. So this line here, it's actually, if we can figure out the radius of this circle, then we can figure out this line, the opposite line, right? So how are we going to find the equation of this circle? Well, lucky for us, this circle is also the intersection of, of this cone and the sphere. Remember, this area here was the cone first, and then this area here is just the part of the sphere that's being integrated over. And this just so happens to be the intersection of both, both, t both these two surfaces, excuse me. And we know that if we want to find the intersection of two graphs, well, we just plug one into the other. In this case, we have our z equals root x squared plus y squared. And then our x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals 2. So I'm going to be plugging z here. That way we can get the intersection of these two surfaces. Right? If we plug that in, we get this x squared plus y squared plus we get x squared plus y squared squared equals 2. The radical and the square just cancel out, so we just get x squared plus y squared plus z squared. Sorry, plus x squared and y squared equals 2. We just combine like terms, we get 2x squared plus 2y squared. We can just factor out a 2 here. y squared equals 2 divided by both sides by 2. And then we get x squared plus y squared equals 1. Notice this is just the equation of a circle in a 2D plane, which just so happens to be the equation of this thing right here, this guy right here, right? So we know that this is the radius squared. Well, square root of 1 is just 1. So we have a circle of radius 1. And because we, we, we remember that the opposite side here of this triangle is just the radius of this entire circle, well, we know that our opposite side is 1. So let me redraw our right triangle here. Okay. We know the hypotenuse was just the radius of the sphere, and then this is just the radius of our 2D circle, if we were to be looking at the cone looking straight down. Okay. And now... Well, we have our two sides. We can just use our trigonometry here. We know sine of phi equals our opposite. This is our opposite, so it's going to be 1 over the hypotenuse, which is square root of 2. Okay, now let me rationalize this for a second. And, and by rationalizing, I mean multiplying this in a way that I get rid of the square root of 2 on the bottom side. Remember, anything divided by itself is just 1. So here, I'm just multiplying by 1. I'm not actually changing the value here. But I want to get rid of this radical on the bottom side, okay? So 1 times square root of 2 is square root of 2. Square root of 2 times square root of 2, well, that's just square root of 4. And what's square root of 4? Right, 2. So now we have sine of phi equals root 2 over 2. And if you remember from your unit circle, this angle corresponding to sine that gives you our root 2 over 2, it's just phi equals pi over 4. If you want to check in your calculator, you can do... You can take the arc sign of both sides. So we're going to have uh, uh, your phi is going to be our sine inverse of root 2 over two. Get that and you should get pi over 4. If you're doing it in degrees, you're going to get 45 degrees. But these two are equivalent. Okay. All right. So we have that. Now we can, we have our second limit. It's going to be from 0 to what was our, it was our square root of 2, this is rho squared, sine of phi, d rho, d phi, d theta, and then remember, uh, this is our angle phi, so it starts here, if this is just a straight line, this is just 0, but ex it extends outwards, so it's going to be all the way to pi over 4, so it's going from 0 to pi over 4. Now, what about our theta? Well, remember this theta, is this entire circle here if we're looking down this remember this is the the area of the entire cone we're taking the entire cone all the way around the z-axis and the angle that gives an entire circle here let's just go from zero to two pi and this is going to be our integral for the volume of this entire region 
So this is easy. I'm going to try to work uh, through this a little quicker. So first integral is going to be 0, root 2, rho squared, sine phi d rho. It's going to be 1 over 3 rho cubed from 0 to square root of 2. It's going to be 1 over 3 square root of 2. We plug that into rho. It's going to be square root of 2 cubed. That's going to be 2 square root of 2. And then 0, that just cancels out. So we're just left with this value. Now, second integral. It's going to be from 0 to pi over 4. And of course, our sine of phi, sorry. Uh, that's just 2 root 2 over 3 sine of phi d phi. Okay, remember, uh, this is just a constant, we can just pull this out here, and then our, the antiderivative of sine is, well, we write our constant, it's going to be negative cosine angle phi from 0 to pi over 4. Now, let me evaluate this real quick, it's going to give me, we're going to have this, it's going to be cosine of pi over 4, well, that's just square root of 2 over 2, so it's going to be negative 2, or sorry, negative square root of 2 over 2 and then minus cosine of 0 is 1 right so we get minus 1 we're going to get minus minus 1 which is minus and minus is just plus we just get plus 1 okay. so we distribute this we get square root of 2 times square root of 2 that is 2 2 times 2 is 4 we get negative 4 over 2 times 3 is 6 and then we distribute this one to the 1 is just 2 square root of 2 over 3 Right now we take our final integral, 0, 2 pi. This just simplifies to negative 2 over 3 plus 2 root 2 over 3 d theta. Okay, these two are just constants in the theta world. So we just uh, add on a theta here, theta plus 2 root 2 over 3. And we evaluate these from 0 to 2 pi. All right, 2 pi times negative 2 is going to be negative 4 pi over 3 plus this should be theta sorry 2 times 2 again it's going to be 4 pi over 3 root 2 and this is our final answer and if we want we can factor out the 4 pi over 3 so we get 4 pi over 3 times we get this square root of 2 and then the negative here it's going to be minus 1 and this should be our final answer for this region